Hey everybody, welcome back. It's uh, Tyler with Green Mountain CrossFit. We're going to do uh, 16.2, Tyler's two cents. So uh, first of all, congratulations. You guys survived 16.1. It was 20 minutes of lots and lots of fun. 16.2 uh, brings us a triplet with a format that's not unheard of. Uh, we saw this a couple of years ago with that uh, crazy Fran ladder where you had to earn more time. Very similar thing. So 16.2, uh, it's uh, shorter than the last one. Maybe. Uh, so let's talk about some tips for mortals. Uh, things that are going to help us. 25 toes to bar. Um, for a lot of us, this is really what the workout is going to be about. And it's going to be about pacing, and it's going to be about staying consistent uh, and measured. The, one of the worst things that we can do, I think, in a workout like this, is start to feel pressured by the clock and try to bang out bigger sets or do bigger chunks of work than we're really able to sustain. So. Uh, 25 toes to bar. We've seen a few athletes already do this workout today. Um, and while some of them started out with chunks of toes to bar, nobody really held sets larger than five at a time. Uh, if you've got unbroken 25 toes to bar and it's no big deal and you're not breathing that hard, then by all means bang them out. But for most mortal folks, small sets and short measured rests are going to be the key. Uh, we know from last year's chipper with the 60 calorie row, 50 toes to bar, uh, going out with a little bit of a larger chunk, maybe for you that's five reps, maybe it's 10 reps, and then taking about a five to seven second break in between each set and uh, going to smaller sets. So maybe you do 10 reps, it's a five se second break, and then you go to sets of five with a five second break. That's gonna get you through this in a pretty reasonable amount of time, less than a minute for sure. Um, for some of us, single reps are gonna be the best way to go. Um, especially if toes to bar is not a great movement for you. One of the things that's going to really fry your grip and that's going to affect the squat cleans uh, down the board here is hanging onto the bar unnecessarily. So the one rep or two reps and then swing, 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 hanging out and then gathering up enough energy to go do another rep, that's going to jack your heart rate up, it's going to fry your grip and it's going to be a lot more work and take a lot longer than is necessary. Um, ideally, you'll have a bar set up at a height where it's maybe two to three inches um, or your feet are two to three inches off the ground where you're hanging from it. So it's a small jump. We don't want to be jumping two feet into the air to get to the bar. However, a small hop to the bar, do a single toes to bar, hop down, give yourself two to three seconds of rest and go again. That's going to get you through. If you go every three seconds with single reps, that gets you through in a minute and 15 seconds. If you have to start slowing that down a little bit more, that gets you maybe a minute and a half to get through 25 toes to bar one at a time. As long as you're not jumping ridiculously to the bar, for most folks, this is going to give you a very measured pace. It's going to keep your heart rate and your breathing under control, and you're going to be able to walk over to the jump rope and uh, have some gas in the tank to bang out your double unders. Right? So 25 toes to bar, small sets, short rests. That might even be sets of one. Uh, but you really want to try to come away from the toes to bar feeling pretty good, especially in these first couple rounds. This should not be uh, where you're really struggling. Um, 25 toes to bar, 50 double unders, right? Here's another place where we're going to have a big discrepancy. Some of us have strong double unders, some of us do not. Uh, again, this is going to be hugely psychological, right? If you're able to keep pace through the toes to bar, you get to your jump rope. If you are somebody with strong double unders, I want you to take a breath, know that you own that movement, get on the rope and bang them out, right? For those of us without strong double unders, the things that we can really focus on to stay efficient are slowing down your jump, giving yourself enough time to get that rope under twice. Uh, if you're somebody with occasional doubles, maybe you do one double for every two or three jumps, so you do double, single, double, single, or double, single, single, double, single, single, that's fine. What I want you to avoid is feeling pressured by the clock. Even if you do double, single, single, double, single, single, that's 150 jumps to get you through 50 reps. That's going to be less than a minute and a half probably worth of jumping. Um, that gets you, if you go a minute and a half here and a minute and a half here, that's three minutes. That gets you a minute to hit the squat cleans, right? Some squat cleans. These change up every round and the weights change depending on your category um, or your division that you're in and where you're working at. So. Um, squat cleans, singles. My advice for mortar people, do not try to rep out a bunch of reps, right? Again, 
Same deal with these things. If you can hit one squat clean, let the bar go to the ground, drop the bar. Don't keep setting the bar down. That's extra work. It's twice as much distance that the bar travels. So uh, clean the bar, drop the bar, follow the bar, move to the bar, right? We saw something similar uh, when Chris Spieler did the clean toes to bar workout or clean and jerk toes to bar workout a couple years ago. Even at 135, right from the get-go, he was doing singles and keeping his breath under control, right? Every three seconds in round one, you've got 15 reps, right? If you go every three to four seconds, that keeps this to a minute or less. That's plenty of time. That gets you under four minutes with all three of these movements and hopefully it keeps your heart rate under control. Rushing through round one because you feel like you need extra time may not be your best bet. That slow, steady pace is gonna be what keeps you going. When we get to the second round, um, the weights go up on the squat planes and that's gonna be a deal breaker for a lot of folks. You're gonna run into a wall there on the leaderboard. So if you have the capacity to clean your second round weights, you wanna get at least one or two reps into that. So if you're keeping a very measured pace through these, maybe you try to keep a slightly quicker measured pace um, in the second round so that gives you time to come back to the bar. Again, the worst thing you can do is feel pressured by the clock. Don't think about, I have to get this in, I have to rush. As soon as you start to rush, things are gonna fall apart. You're gonna be breathing harder, your heart rate's gonna go up. So uh, take that extra five seconds. If you have it, take that extra five seconds. Look at the clock, understand that you are in control, take a breath, and then go get those heavier squat cleans, right? If the second round squat clean weight is no big deal for you, same exact strategy. Stay paced, stay measured, don't rush. Keep yourself under control. It's gonna be enough work as it is, I guarantee it, right? So uh, most of us are gonna be, uh, you know, depending on where you're at, two rounds, three rounds into this, very few people are gonna be Josh Bridges style crushing it in the you know, 19th minute. So we wanna be uh, pretty well warmed up for this. As it's a shorter workout than last time, we wanna have a good long warm up. Uh, warm up wants to include Things that are gonna loosen up the hips, uh, the more free our hips are, the better our squat cleans are gonna be, the better our toes to bar are gonna be, right? So things like uh, Spider-Man steps, dead bugs, this gets you into a lot of that active hip flexion. It's gonna start to stretch out hamstrings as well as activate some of the hip flexors in the front. Um, get your spine warmed up, definitely. Hollow bodies and supermans are gonna get the back warmed up, um, good mornings, things like that. We wanna get the aerobic engine going also, right? Knowing that this is going to be a shorter workout, but it's a very measured pace, we wanna to try to warm up for at least as much time as we think we're gonna be working for, probably more. If you think you're only gonna get stuck in that first round, don't just throw this out and say, I don't even need to warm up, it's no big deal. Get yourself a 10 to 12 minute warm up. Get that aerobic engine going and that's gonna help you perform better in that first round. Um, so, you know, get on the rower for a few minutes, the, uh, get the heart rate up, break a sweat, get breathing hard, and then have a few minutes to rest before your heat starts. We all know the gym's crazy in, uh, you know, on the day to do the open, so equipment may or may not always be available. This, thank God, will take up less space in the gym than the last one, so should be a little easier to find some space to warm up. Uh, in terms of mobility, what should you guys be worried about? Hips, right? I talked about it in the warm up. Hips are going to be a huge factor. Uh, banded hip distractions are great. Stride stance good mornings, awesome. Kettlebell windmills, awesome. The more freely your hips move, the easier the toes to bar are going to be. And that happens in both directions. Understand that especially if you're kipping the toes to bar, you need to be able to open the hip and get that hip extension in the back swing of the kip. Um, that's gonna help you avoid pulling strongly on the low back. Uh, this workout, between the toes to bar and the squat cleans can be a real fryer for the low back, so be careful with that. Um, back of the hip, front of the hip. Kettlebell, smash, into the psoas. Uh, go to mobilitywide.com, look for this, look for psoas, look, look for hip flexor mobilizations. There's some banded distractions there also. It's a really awesome resource that you guys have. We've done a ton of this stuff in class also, so get the front of the hips open. Um, 
as far as the squat cleans go, we want to do anything that can improve the rack position, right? Which includes, but is not limited to, addressing the T-spine, thoracic spine, upper part of the back. That needs to be able to extend well. All right, take two. Sorry about the weird splicey thing there. Um, technical issues with my high-quality 2013 smartphone that I'm recording on. Uh, anyhow, uh, mobilizations. Get the front of the hip open, get the hamstrings mobilized and ready to go. All that stuff is going to help. Get the thoracic spine opened up, get your rack position uh, into where it needs to be. All those things are going to help you perform much, much better on game day, right? So uh, hopefully that gives you guys some tips and tricks for mortal people, things that you can think about. Remember, even though it's short, think about your pacing. Be measured, be deliberate. Don't let the clock beat you into submission on this one. Be in charge of the clock, use it to your advantage. Um, if you start to feel pressured, things are going to fall apart, right? Enjoy the workout, have fun on game day, and I'll see you guys at the gym.